welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make over a crate. I managed to pick up a bunch of real fruit and vegetable crates from a grocery store that was closing down. And they've been really great in my own shop for display purposes, but I decided to decorate one. I wanted to keep the rustic farmhouse look, but make it more pretty. So I chose the shabby floral decoupage tissue paper by Redesign with Prima. And then on the ends, I added some corner moldings. These are from Flexiwood Australia. The paint I used is Pure Eco Silk Finish. I used a couple of their dusky, gorgeous pinks from the range. There are a few more layers than what I originally anticipated, but I'm glad I kept going because it turned out just perfect. I'm using today by Flexiwood Australia are called Decorative Corner Set 007 and they come in a pack of two so I'll be using two packs and I'm attaching them to the ends of the crate so it will look like this just happens to fit perfectly before I attach them though I'm going to stain the crate and the pieces separately the reason for this is because once I glue this on, some of the glue will ooze out of here and I'll clean that away. But then once it's on the wood there, it'll create a sort of a seal. So the stain won't penetrate that area. I'm gonna paint the whole thing anyway and just distress some areas back. So it might not be noticeable. But in this case, I think it's best to stain it before I stick it on. The stain I've chosen to use is Sable by Purico. And it's a dark chocolate brown, which will show through perfectly in the distressed areas of the project and match the um, shabby floral paper by Redesign. I'm going to paint the moldings first. Always remember to give a stain a really good stir so you get even coverage. just one coat it's really nice rich chocolate brown usually when staining uh, like say a piece of furniture <clears throat> you would use the green applicator brush by Purico which is really easy to use you um, stir your staining glaze and then like tip the jar into the sponge and it just all glides on it's great in this case I'm not going to use the sponge because the wood is quite rough and it also on these areas here and I don't want to tear the sponge on it and damage it um, and because of all like little corners and little crevices and stuff, I'm actually going to use a brush instead. So I finished staining the crate and it's nice and dry. I left the base and the sides because I'm going to paint that a pale colour. For when the decoupage paper goes on top and I've stained the mouldings which now look a lot like real chocolate which you might eat no don't eat flexi with mouldings so now I'm going to glue on the mouldings on here like this I'm just working at an angle like this so you can see what I'm doing I'm gonna stick them on with Gorilla Wool glue just pour some out like that and then I paint them on with a craft brush. Onto the back of the moulding. This is a fine one. So I've got to be careful not to put too much glue. Otherwise it'll ooze out everywhere and be really hard to clean up around the edges. It doesn't take much to stick though anyway. Just pressing that down now and to help it stick I'm going to heat it using a hairdryer. Next 
next we're going to wipe away any parts of the glue here that oozed out. Just wipe it so there's no globs and uh, you can use a damp cloth. It dries clear so it's not too big deal if there's some. Just don't want any bubbles. There we go. And I'll do the other three. Next step is to start painting. I've chosen the silk finish in Calico. It's by Purico. It's a nice neutral beige colour. I'm putting that on the base and the sides where the decoupage paper is going to go and I'm going to do some areas of the stained sections and I'm going to stress that back. stage I'm up to now with the painting so I did like just like one full coat where the decoupage paper is going and then I did light coats sort of rough around the stained areas most of them and the bottom and I didn't even have to like wet distress or distress with sandpaper at all and it's got that rustic farmhouse look to it I have to do a little bit differently on the sides though because of the moldings I need to get it in the little details there and then I'm going to wipe it back so I'm going to use a damp cloth and see how that goes so I'll just work in sections too because um, pure eco silk finish has a sealer and it's so once it's dry it's dry um, so I'll try and do it when it's still wet but at the same time get in there so I'll just do around the molding first but not perfect I don't want it to be perfect um, and then using a damp chucks cloth This is how it's looking after a quick little paint there and just wiping back with the damp cloth. Later I might try sanding as well a little bit to see what that looks like, but I'm happy with it so far. It's all coming together nicely. So now I'm gonna cut the decoupage paper up. Um, I like to have a little bit overhanging the edges rather than trying to line them up because that often ends up crooked for me. I don't know what I'm doing with that sometimes. Um, but if you have a little bit overhanging, once it's dry, you get the sanding pad and you get a nice crisp edge there and it's just easier. So, I just measured that 30 centimeters. Just double check. Is plenty. So I'll cut out 30 centimeters to lay in there. And I've got just enough on the edge here to do the two sides and I'll have some at the end for another project, so it works out really well. So I made an error when I was cutting out the paper. I forgot that the inside here is actually shorter than this outside section. So ended up cutting the sides a little bit too short, but that's okay. I've got the rest of the off cut there from the pattern and I've made a little piece that I can match up there and it shouldn't be too obvious. So I'll have a go putting this on. I'm using the Purico Matte Sealer as an adhesive. It's a poly top coat, so it acts as a glue. Just need to make sure you brush on enough so that it sticks but also sort of soaks into the paper, especially as this wood here is rough. Just 
smooth that down with my hands first. Then I actually use a Purico palm brush, which is, can act a lot like a wallpaper brush to smooth that down. dried now um, so I can sand the edges the base here has gaps between the boards and you can see there that the paper has gone over those gaps I could cut them with a knife and pass sandpaper or a pad through them if it fits <clears throat> but I've decided to just leave it because I like the pattern and the look and means I don't have to do as much work. So I'm just gonna sand these edges now. I'm using like a slightly coarser grit, more of a prep grit than a finishing one. It needs to be coarse enough to <clears throat> go through the paper, which is a lot like fabric. I found that when it's too fine, it just doesn't do a good job and it ends up kind of being like a bit furry. If you use the pad on an angle, like so, helps really grip into the paper and reduce the likelihood of any of your paint getting sanded off on that edge there, which on this project um, sort of goes with the shabby rustic look. But if you had a sleek modern piece, you want to reduce the likelihood of paint coming off. edges there it's time to seal the decoupage paper and the great thing about this project is you can use the same top coat sealer that you used to stick it on with to seal it with so you just need that one product just brush it on one coat should be enough. It's looking really good and it's almost finished. I just want to add a little bit of pink to it and it will help bring out the pink in the flowers. I think it's going to look really lovely. Purico in the Silk Finish range has a colour called Rosewood. It's a dusty, dusky, vintage pink and it's absolutely beautiful. I know it's going to be perfect for this. I'm just going to add a little bit possibly just around the edges and the sides. I don't want full coverage. Um, I'm gonna dry brush it so you can still see the layers of the other colors underneath. I'm just gonna wipe some of it back to make it a little more subtle and even there with this damp cloth. I kept going and did the inside to blend it in a bit better because I thought it needed it. And I've actually decided to add one more color because I think it needs it. Um, it's Firebird, another very deep rosy color. 
Well, it's sort of already in here in the roses as well as the lighter pink. So I'm just gonna dry brush a tiny amount of that over the moldings to help them pop a bit more. And a bit along the sides and edges. I gave all the painted parts a sand and they're looking really good, particularly on the inside there. On the ends though, I noticed that the molding wasn't really standing out enough and this is sort of drawing attention away from the moldings. So I added one more layer. I just went back over with the sable stain and glaze and just touched up this area there, dry brushing it. So I'll just do this other side now to show you. Mm -hmm. 